there, I'm Critzy Bear. Welcome back to Elder Kings 2. Who knows what happens in the year 2E560? Any any hands? Who knows what happens in that year? <coughs> well, you'll be certainly surprised cuz last episode I didn't even think about it. I was talking all kinds of stuff about how we were going to go on tour, and how we were going to upgrade our society, you know, all kinds of progress I was talking about. Let's see about that. Let's see if that ends up happening. But, before anything, I feel like... Let's avoid... going on tour. Just hold off on it. For a few decades. Might want to go inside for about 50 years. Reading in the Hall of Deathwart's Pond. A tedious feast has become even worse when Queen Ninrus has suggested reading from the sacred little snow moth. Thankfully, Keatless soon suggested reading the monomyth instead. The scared little snow moth. <clears throat> what? What do you? What you got a problem with the scared little snow moth? Sensual proposal. Wherever I go, my wife is sure to follow. That look in her eyes, the words on her lip, I know exactly what she's after. Okay. My queen is my lover now. As I return to the chambers, I share with queen... Whatever. We slept together and now we have an actual relationship. Instead of a political one, like it was previously for the past, I don't know, 50 years. <coughs> Ooh, war. Shadowfen war. Now, oh. I'd like to inform you there's been an attempt on my liberty. A group of ruffians attempted to abduct me and the tools of my office. Who paid them is unclear, but the ploy seems to obvious enough. Controlling my person and my symbol re as regent might let their paymaster usurp my rightful place. You don't say. Uh, it's a lot like something you did. A new Sybil was found. Hooray! Oh, we also unlocked a new trait. I think I'm going to pick Thoughtful so that I can start negotiating alliances. I have studied the South Nick language for many moons. I personally penned this missive upon using the South Nick script. A letter of friendship from a speaker of gel. Thank you. Helleter's first enrobing. He's just gonna throw screaming sounds at me. <coughs> As I patiently wait for the fetching of my clothes, a servant stutters. My lord, uh, no one can find your garments. I am surrounded by incompetence, I mutter, storming from my bedchamber. In the nursery of my son, Helleder, I discover not only my raiments, but also the boy's wet nurse. I had no part in it. He dressed himself. Gilori responds with a giggle. So what, he got dressed up in my clothes? Oh, that's cute. So, he's a prince of fashion. For that little scoundrel. I get a little prestige from being happy with my son. That little scoundrel, he stole my clothes and got dressed up as queen. Uh-oh. The Nahatan flu has begun. In the city of Stormhold. A number of victims develop horrific boils and vomit that lasts until death. Organs falling out of their mouth. Blood. Guts. 
disgusting. Darkening horizon. Missives and messages sprawl across my desk. They're all about one particular subject. The panic steeps from the words, forming an forming in turn a rapidly rising pool of dread in my stomach. The sickness starts with a red rash, quickly covering the whole body. Their breath becomes wretched gasps between expulsions of blood, which also flows from the nose and the eyes, and then it kills indiscriminately. Rich, poor, young, old, duke, and downtrodden. The reports are from far-flung lands for now, but my trembling fingers take the dates. It is getting closer. As a non-Nargonian culture in Black Marsh, your people are at risk of being wiped out by the Nahatan flu. Oh, here she comes. Watch out or she'll eat you up. The market usually holds a fair amount of hustle and bustle, but today there's true cacophony echoing through the place. I spy the culprit, a figure shouting at the top of his lungs. The end is upon us, he wells, arranging some passerbys. We will all perish, it is written. The flecks of spittle flying from the preacher's mouth disgusts most, but the watching crowd are beginning to agree loudly. I mean, it is written. <clears throat> to be fair, <clears throat> he is not wrong. It is written. <clears throat> Show me where it is written. Please, prove your words. <laughs> There's a 60% chance he does. He does. 15% chance of mass panic if I... Eh, minus point one control. Or angry crowds, which is minus 15 popular opinion if I arrest him. Don't listen to him! We will solve this issue! Before the flu gets to us, we will hire the best healer in the land. Trusting me. My son Helider has been asking me for a pet rabbit for a long time, and I told him I would get one for him in three months if he displayed more focus in his study. Ever since I made the promise, he has been redoubling the effort in his studies. He must focus on the boons he already possesses. Oh. Or trusting? <clears throat> I'll go ahead and go for content, since that would increase the opinion of vassals as well, without the vulnerability of being trusting. Look at it spread. Look at it go. Whoa, here she comes. Watch out or she'll eat you up. Whoa, here she comes. Watch out, cause she's a man-eater. Here, here comes, it's spreading, elbow deep. <clears throat> a cadaver lies on the table, surrounded by various macabre equipment, both my physician, Tekabir, and myself. As well as both of us, we're not the macabre equipment. I'm not sure, my lady, Tekubir begins nervously, his gaze affixed firmly at his feet. I'm not sure what we can garner from this corpse. He knows quite well what we could do, but he simply doesn't want me to ask it of him. Dissecting the cadaver of a plague bearer would could give us some gracious hints on how to combat it. The only question is whether there's any risk of catching the terrible affliction. Alright, we'll do without. However, I'm getting a different healer, because you're just average, right? Nope, we don't have a better healer, alas. Direct him to control plagues. Watch out, here she comes. The plague is spreading down the river, slowly. Now it spreads out into the sea. And it spreads. It spreads through the slavers. 
It spreads to the lords, the masters of House Drez. Yes! Simple pleasures discarded. Shadis, no! The voice of Garusht rings over the sound of my horse as it walks along the path. You've heard what's on its way, all that death and disease. He wrings his hands unhappily. You must stay here, safe and sound, in the walls. Please. I can only sigh. If I'd just been a little quicker out of the gate, I'd be riding in the countryside now, happily taking in nature. He's probably right. Added plague resistance. Watch out, here it comes. Metal break. Isolate myself. My mom will stop being my friend if I isolate myself. Lately it feels like I'm constantly distracted. Uh, I must sequester myself to avoid temptation. Isolate myself from my mother. This is a very stressful situation. I'm gonna start... I'm gonna stop seeing people. Roaming. Raving. Roaming. Raving. The guards are usually not so forthright when it comes to disturbing my council chambers, but today they burst in readily, my martial Kunthir at their head. Behind them, being dragged along unceremoniously, is a pitiful figure with wide eyes and what appears to be a whip clasped tightly in his hands. We found him in Volksen, wandering the streets, beating himself bloody with that thing. He is giving the locals frights of their lives, the frights of their lives, ranting about how... The mighty pestilence is on its way, and we all must repent. Let him go. They're doing no harm. Do anyone but himself. I can't throw him in the dungeon just for whipping himself. That's weird, but not a crime. You know, I've noticed other modules for Crusader Kings don't let you zoom in as far. A little tickle. My eyelids flutter open this morning as the sun beams down on them. I roll upright, stretch, yawn, and... <coughs> <coughs> My throat is a bit sore. My eyes, too, somewhat blearier than usual. I even feel a slight sniffle. Oh no, please not me. Deliver me from this fate. Tell me, O oh Zen, that it's not the dreaded plague that spread to these lands, and that made me its victim. My physician can give me the top of the line in treatments. I'm just a little sick is all. I'm just, I got a little cough. I happen to get a cold while well, there's a pandemic going on. Oh goodness, there's a whole shadow over Sewell now. The disease has spread to our borders. Dun dun. Stiff stackers. The very first supplicant of the day steps toward me, and it's clear that nobody of high standing, the dirt and grime beneath their fingernails, confirm that. Even if she clearly has put some effort into appearing presentable. I represent the grave diggers of Volksen, my lady, she begins, and we have a request for you. The fearsome plague creeps towards us as we speak. Our noble profession will be much in need soon, that is sure. We will be we will be the ones handling the bodies and the one most at risk. In return, we ask for some small raise and recompense. Could you grace spare some coin? Yeah, you know what we can. That's a good idea. We got hella coin. Go ahead and uh, raise the plague resistance. Also, upgrade rock guard. So we've got enough prestige for that. We also got a heck of a lot of money, but we should save that for when we go to feudal. Oh, but I'm gonna need more prestige to upgrade our freaking law level. Here comes the flu. The Nahatan flu. 
pestilence stalks the land. A grisly red rash grows upon its victims, whose victims, whose pitiful calls for help are slowly stifled as they gutter and drown in their own blood-filled throats. From the lowliest urchin to the most fetid empire, fated empire, all dread the indiscriminate scythe of the merciless plague. Those that survive most must watch helplessly around them as all perish. The, devo the devoted look upon the divine for a savior, and the powerful their riches, but none but the Argonians can truly stay safe. Dreadful tendrils spread across the land, constricting it until no longer it breathes. The Nahatan flu is upon us. Zen, save us all. Bum bum. My court physician. The world is full of dangers, even to the queen of her court. Sorry, we lost our physician. No, we haven't. We still have our physician. Argonian doctor? Fuck it. You know what? Hire the Argonian doctor. She is also average, but she's not gonna die of the plague. For sure. Alms. My queen, efforts to attend the sick and dying uh, among the most poor has been difficult but necessary work, and lately families of the dying have begun to accuse the crown of not truly caring for the diseased. It is my opinion that distributing coins touched by the blessed of your royal hands as to touched... Yeah, okay. 15% chance of gaining the flu, but a bunch, bunch of piety? Sure. Actually worked. We are missing 13 prestige before we can join the Council of the Eight. The Divines long ago invested spiritual authority in Alessia the Paravent, and thus Cyrodiil has maintained status as a first among equals in spiritual matters. The Council of the Eight exists to enshrine this position in law, and at the same time grant regional chapels a seat at the table and a voice at the Archprimate's arch ear. As the de facto worldly leader of my faith, I certainly have a say in its future, and perhaps our priesthood stands to gain more from gain joining the Council than our believers stand to lose from submitting to its authority. Let's go. We're going to lose hostility with our with our uh <clears throat> We're we're going to lose hostility with the Council of Divines. Let's see what he has to say about it. It might be a worthwhile ecum ecumenic Ecumenical, ecumenical. It might be a worthwhile ecumenical exercise in the future to send missionaries to Black Marsh, as it is rather lacking in religious installations at present. Institutions of any kind, really. It is important that we raise temples to Akatosh, provided we can build them to last. She faces the assembled Zen Pact with the wise ones with, and shakes her head. No matter, lost children of Alessia, we welcome you back into the warmth of the Dragonfires. With these words, a long session of the Council concludes. Henceforth, we are considered full members of the assembled clergy, and they disperse murmurs of approval. But some of the priests fall to their knees and shout, Glory to Dibimara Kin! Glory to the Divines! Dibimara Kin! Glory to Dibimara Kin! Glory to the Divines! A united faith certainly looks good for my legacy. Now we're more famous, and we can upgrade our crown authority, and we can adopt autocracy, but I don't know if it's a good time right now. Right before our heir is about to inherit. Like, I mean, there's no way we get through this alive, right? <clears throat> oh. Isolate capital. 
Yes. Let's isolate our capital. It's going to lose us some prestige. And also, can't remember what else it's going to do. But it's going to help us resist the plague, I hope. Just, you know, isolate it for 40 years. We are surprisingly holding out for a long time out here. Watch out, here it comes. The Guillem Popular Press. Elsewhere, ravaged by Knot and Flu. Trade routes across Tamriel are suddenly losing much of their business, and the reason is known. Word is coming from elsewhere that the great cities have been swept by the Kanatan flu. As bloodied corpses fill the once busy streets of the sprawling Kajiti cities, horrified officials have turned to raising whole neighborhoods in an effort to stop the disease. We're still holding out. Yep, but all of elsewhere now has the disease. So does the Imperial Province. Morrowind's starting to get it. <clears throat> but we're still holding out. We're still resisting. Fingers crossed we managed to <laughs> survive the flu. The gift of generosity. My son and heir, Helidur, has been impressed with one, <clears throat> one of the household champions for a long time. Apparently, after meeting in person, he has begun repeating the warrior's words to himself. Give others their due and you will receive yours in turn. Generous? Yeah, we can do generous. That's, that's a... Oh, but so is patient. Let's go for patient instead of generous. See if we can get him to be the magic baby. Inherited where? Oh. I have inherited my mother's territory? Do I have any relatives I can give that to? Grant to... Tulakul. Nope. Apparently, my son is the only living Tulakul. <clears throat> wow. Well, now we control down here. Branch Grove. Don't really want it. But I don't have any family members to give it to, so... Let's just give... Let's just give the various tribes down here to... Tiny little vassals. Various Kathringi and Yespet. Just to give us more opportunities to marry in the future. <clears throat> you are the biggest... Are you a vampire, sir? Are you a vampire, mister? You have red eyes. No, you're half-elf, aren't you? Yeah, you're a half-elf. No, not Blackwood. High Chieftain of Branch Grove. Grant you all these vassals as well. Barassi now stretches down there. How close does that make me to making an empire title, I wonder? Twenty-six out of one hundred and twenty required. Nope, not gonna happen. Sorry, I'm at war with somebody. Is this my war? No, that's not my war. I guess... 
Are we even allied? We're not even allied. Whatever. My mom died and now we're at her war. She got the flu. <clears throat> My brother died. Morrowind ravaged by the Knotten flu. Nahotten flu. An ominous shadow looms over Morrowind as Nahotten flu has left little but tragedy in its wake. Even the largest of Morrowind's ancient Dunmer families are barely clinging to existence as casualties pile up. Worshippers of the tribunal pack into the temples, seeking healing and wondering why something so terrible would ever be allowed to happen. We're still holding out? Rock Guard is st still holding out. Defensive negotiations. I'm hoping we can negotiate an alliance with Shadowfen over here. Oh, I'm at war, right. Why Why am I at war? We're not even allies. Medicinal jar. Find myself passing near Zamar's study every day, every hour. The threat of the Nahatan flu constantly on my mind. Proximity to her study offers me some comfort, even solace. <clears throat> Among all the curious utensils Zemmers keeps on hand, one in particular, a beautiful painted jar, seems to be special to her. She notices my attentions. I see you have an interest in my Cleal medicine jar. It is a true marvel of handcraft, but the real wonders are contained within. It offers me protection while I go out and save the lives of your subjects. If you say so, please carry on. Negotiate alliance with my new vassal? Hell yeah. Now, I'm going to go ahead and release you, I think. Right, I'm at war. I can't yet. Do you hurry up and finish your war, please? Why have I lost my ability to hold six territories? I guess I don't really need the uh, prestige lifestyle anymore, so let's focus on domain so that we don't lose any more territory. Oh, we're at war with these guys as well? Man, what the heck? They want me to end my capital's isolation. Probably because it's too late. It's <laughs> too late, dude. Valenwood! Ravaged by the Nahatan flu! Cries ring out in the forests of Valenwood. The Nahatan flu stalks beneath the canopy and creeps in the highest tree branches like an inescapable predator with an insatiable appetite. No matter where the Bosmer, Imga, and other tree climbers flee, the ravages of the Nahatan flu follow and the underbrush is stained from the blood of dead bodies. When will it end? Dude's just fallen from trees in Valenwood. Please, end the war. Go in there, get it done. Oh, they, they have the... They have the... The wounded animation safe and sound. It's not exactly a good thing, this flu, but at the same time, it does see some benefits. After all, we've had nary a visitor for multiple days now, just how I like it, and even the servants are making themselves scarce. It's hard to say just how much is preventing me from catching the disease, but I'm rather taken by the results. Still, I wonder, should I make some effort to show my face? Just a risk, though. Nope. Let's just hang out at home. Lose some stress because we're, recre we're, we're recreational. Oh, cool. Didn't even need my army. 
recreational what's the R word that you go you go and hide with I might colonize Zenithar's obby, Abby. I'm just a little worried is all. It's going to take 21 years. Hopefully our culture doesn't die before then. I'm hoping I'm hoping that we don't even need that that like colonizing the abbey. Let's just start sending Kathringi over to the abbey. Flood it with with sick people. Um, hopefully it becomes a backup holdout for our people, because I'm not sure how far from the marsh we have to get before we can, before we can, uh, survive the flu, you know? Masonic Dealings. A guild of stonemasons has established itself in the chiefdom of Den De Deathwart's Pond. I will strike a deal with them. What deal did I make? For a lower price than this, it cannot be done. Okay, spend 50 gold on Masonic dealings. I've been hosting your vassal, your, uh, another thousand cults. Rebellion in the midst of the flu. Why, why can I hold less territory? What's going on? Let's see. We got another criminal situation. My boy becomes compassionate, which is a virtue. He's already got one other virtue. He's now patient and compassionate and content. Oh my god. He's becoming like the best boy. I hope he doesn't die. <clears throat> Death comes to all, and in High Rock, this has become all too true, as the land plays host to the dreaded Knouten flu. Commoners and nobles alike are perishing in record numbers, and the once lucrative Iliac Bay is now the escape route for choice of choice for hundreds of jam-packed refugee vessels. Even the greatest of the region's questing and crusading Breton heroes are at a loss for how to alleviate the people's suffering. When will it end? Flu is withdrawing. A little bit. Regent revoke title. Whose title? You, you don't even live here. What are you? What are you talking about? Whose title? Whose title are you revoking? You're not even my vassal. Okay. All right. I don't want you to be my regent in that case. <laughs> oh my god. I've been letting the freaking regent power swing way too far. Time we spend together. My lover is not loving me very well right now. I don't know what happened, but we are now we now have a negative relationship. You blasphemed our marriage by having concubines. Ah, because they we have different religions. I see. <clears throat> Time we spend together. I do not hold my wife close to heart, and the more I spend time with Nain Russ, the more I start to understand why that is. Everything she does gets on my nerves. Just a little bit. I have to live an entire life with this person. My wife. Wife bad. 
Choke. Haha. <laughs> Funny. Wife bed. Yo, where's my tutor? What the fuck? Oops. Aw, oh, man. Forgot to have him study gel again. Dang it. Oh, he's... He's also gay, which might be convenient for marriages. Culture Clash. Most of the commoners living in Zilul are of Naga descent. Proud of their traditions, it does not sit well with them that they must serve a foreigner like me when their neighbor, Chieftess Hatchling, shares their culture and history. I do not care if they keep their weird traditions. Zilul specifically, right? I am the ruler. Irrelevant. It would be nice to give them... It would be nice to give them, um... What they want, but I kind of need them, and... I also kind of need to promote culture as well. Forvin's missing hides! Yeah, we can't travel to find them right now. Sorry, buddy. You're gonna have to fix it yourself. <clears throat> Unconditionally. As I lean over the map in the council chamber, a sudden creak turns my head towards the door. My son, Helidor, appears in the hallway, seemingly uninterested in my presence. Then, without warning, I am enclosed in a tight hug. He quickly let go with an embarrassed expression. Aw, oh, you're a good son. Alchemical aid. With the ongoing epidemic in my realm, it would be wise to take whatever measures possible to safeguard my capital against the threat. Fortunately, there are a few skilled alchemists and potion sellers. Potion seller? I need your strongest potion! I'm going to cure a plague, and none but your strongest potion will do! While their products may not fully cure those who have fallen ill, it can alleviate some symptoms and sometimes aid the body enough to survive on its own. However, in these demanding times, it would require a significant stock of potions, which takes time to produce and requires expensive reagents. Buy them! I lost stress for that because I'm compassionate as well. I think I'm gonna go for administration. Alternative reading. In a dusty corner of the library, I find a tome bound in letter and inscribed with weird symbols, partially hidden behind other books. It is old, but obviously has seen some recent use. Go ahead and read it. Regent revoke title, another one? Okay. Go ahead. She is now Lady Nimrus. We now have a Cameron ruler in our realm. I don't know how this happened, but there she is. She's been she's been using her regent powers in order to achieve this. She's now somebody's vassal. Good job. She has been a mighty inconvenience to me. The human tide. Moments after I first notice the rumbling and shouting in the doors to my throne room, they are flung open. My guards helplessly carried away by a roiling tide of peasants. Young, old, woman, man, all manner of commoner are here. One amongst them steps towards to address me. My lady! Maras begins, gesturing to the mob behind him. We request your support and your protection from the Kanatan flu. As is your duty to us. Come on in, everyone. Yep. Come on. Oh, my God. That's a lot of people. Gods, get them out of here. That would help resist the plague. 
Can we scroll down? Can we see what the benefits of allowing them in would be? Oh, actually, turning them down wouldn't be that big of a deal because, remember, we have social anxiety from our childhood. So we would only feel a little bit guilty from that. Turn them away for the plague's sake. Yo, look, we're recovering. We haven't died. Yo! At least parts of our empire are recovering. Little patches. Mental break, dark thoughts. Guilt and shame have been plaguing me as of late. All my sins, my flaws, my failings, these dark thoughts distract me from my responsibilities, keep me awake at night. Yep, it's dark times, got lots of people dying and stuff. I feel like I must do something to put an end to this mental anguish. Donating to charity will help me. I have gained the trait improvident. Yo! Yo! We survived the plague! Regent Revoke title, another one. Revoke title from who? Okay, whatever. Man, my regent is crazy strong. The diarchy. We have the big queen and then the one who gets to take turns being leader. We, we have the queen and then the prime minister. Who just keeps revoking titles. The thing is, if I tell him no, it will take prestige from me. Sorry, we have a faction going on. Peasant rabble. Doesn't really matter. My regent has changed. Please be selfless. Thank you. Leverage a little gold to weaken them. Why can we only have four ter territories? What? What's happening? Oh. oh! Brilliant strategist! Holy warrior! Holy shit! More like. As an active and enth enthusiastic child, it is no surprise that Helidur has done well in his studies of war and combat. It is impressive to see such skill in someone so young. He displays a level of insight that's rare even among veteran commanders. It's a holy warrior. I think I'm gonna give him some of my territories. Just giving him Zilul would fix it. Yeah, let's give him Zilul. And for the record, he is not able to get married. Who would give you the most prestige? Prince Andil of Elden Root. It would also give us an alliance with who? Artaman. Which is not very much. Another marriage to House Cameron. It would give him a thousand prestige. If we continue marrying ourselves off to House Cameron, then that would give my next heir a pretty decent boost to his starting prestige. All right, let's go for a grand wedding with, with another Cameron. Further solidify our ties to the Wood Elves. I gladly accept 
your betrothal, your son and heir, and my father will be joined in holy matrimony, making him his own grandpa? <clears throat> well, let's start the grand wedding. It's not going to be that expensive either, because we've been saving up hella money. Let's see, Death Wart's Pond, our capital. Why is this one a benefit? Why, why can we... Whatever. Just host, host it in Death Wart's Pond. Death Wart... Presiding. Ribbit. Ribbit. Acrobats, musicians, a gargantuan meal, garlands and with silver and gold. Oh, he's already at, at an activity. I suppose I can plan it while it's unpaused. Death Wart's Pond, choking streets. It's finally here. The dreaded pestilence stalks the streets of Death Wart's Pond, its wanton scythe striking down all in its path. The winding streets and piled housing, so usually bustling with teeming masses, is silent. Only the pitiful wails of the bereaved and the hacking wet coughs of those soon to be mounting dead break still. Alms donations may at least ease the dying passage, or of the city, my precious city. Determined to recover the long road or crippling sorrow. 33% chance to get one of those. Let's see. The long road. My capital city has been ravaged by plague and they are committed to its recovery despite fit pitfalls. That's going to give us stewardship per stress. We have long been burdened by your oppressive laws. Peasant Rebellion, right on right on the edge of frickin' Big Flu. Go get him. Go get him. Go get him. No, that's probably enough. Go go get him. Servant of Molag Ball! Are you ready to abjure? Man, the witch trait is weird. That scared me for a second. I thought Molag Ball selected me. I was... <clears throat> Are you ready for the truth, Shadis? I sit up, suddenly completely awake. I look around for my, the source of the unfamiliar voice, but there is only shadows. Molag Ball offers you his blessings. Will you accept it? That'll give me the witch trait, which will allow me to practice magic. Yes. Yes. Fuck yeah. I mean, like, the Molag Ball thing is... Eh. I mean, I imagine a, a witch of our culture would probably be more... in league with, like, the lesser spirits that we mentioned, like, you know, the Hist and stuff. Now I just need to pass it on to our son. And then he'll be able to practice magic. Remember, witchcraft is accepted in our culture because of the influence of the Thousand Colts, so I can't imagine we're actually out here professing Molag Ball's name. You know, I'm going to give you these guys as a vassal, just to help you out. It's weird that Gideon is declaring war on you, you know? Sorry. Negotiate alliance with who? My niece? Okay. That reminds me, I wanted to release you guys, didn't I? Grant independence. There you go. They're still our ally, so now we're even stronger.
We can call them to war and stuff now. Word of advice. I saunter between the market stalls of Deathwart's Pond, a heavy pouch tugging at my belt. How can I make this coin work for me? Turn a quick profit, invest in a smithy, or invest in a jeweler's workshop. I don't really need any of these things, but... I guess invest in the jeweler's workshop so I get more prestige didn't work, and I knocked something over. Can you attend a wedding yet? What activity are you at? What do you mean, he's involved in an activity? Well, I reloaded it and tried, but I think without... I think without freaking going into the console and fixing it, I don't think I'm going to be able to achieve the wedding. Because I can't see what activity this guy would be involved in. He's not like a regent or anything. Alas. I'm going to go ahead and break the betrothal. I'm going to lose a whole level of fame from that. And freaking do it again. But without a grand wedding. Oh great, now we can't do the same one anymore. Oh boy. No, not alliance power, prestige gain. Whatever. Marry him to a more handsome elf that won't ask for a freaking grand wedding. Lost an entire level of fame now. I can't hold our tribal authority as, as well as I want it. That was dumb. And now he is a witch. Oh, he doesn't have enough magic. Took us our entire life to get enough magic to achieve any level of magical feat. <laughs> Took us our whole life. Ain't no way we're gonna be able to extend our lifespan in the amount of years we have left. Magic is cool, though. Can do stuff like that. Oh, development went back down in Deathwart's Pond because of the plague. Yo, but we survived! Deathwart's Pond no longer plagued. I could adopt another child if I wanted to. Just because we're compassionate. I wonder if you get a different event. The Living Energies! I think we've seen this event before on a previous character, but... I've been struggling with this primer on restoration for some time. The book is comprehensible enough and provides clear outlines for formularic descriptions of standard restoration spells, but there is one issue that it has stumped me. It makes repeated references to the living energies, assuming that the reader understands and makes several explanations of restoration's methods, mysteries, and contingent on this concept. <clears throat> I have searched for the term elsewhere to no avail. Here and there, obscure references, most of them of a religious nature, or at least metaphysical. This much seems to be obvious. 
the living energies are what we in the school affect through magicka in our living bodies to create the effects of spells. It is the fundamental divine bequeathment. No, we don't need that one anymore. Magical experience. Give me the one with the magic experience. Leal of Hot Vol. It's actually not that far from accepting vassalization if I put a little more effort into his relationship. Scheme at court. Someone is plotting to murder me. I wonder if it could be the governess who hates me for some reason. <laughs> Probably the high level of authority. The lingering scent. In times like these, it's best to be wary of any strange smells. This one, however, emanates from a corner of the market square, and it is positively fragrant. Get your sachets here. Only the freshest herbs to be used. The, craftest merchant, the crafty merchant stall was covered in various aromantics, Aromatics. <laughs> Covered in various aromantics. Get them down from there! As she holds a pouch with them in each hand as she hawks her wares. Only the best, milady. Keep you right safe from the Knotten Fluid Wheel. Really, because they told me that elsewhere was getting boned by the flu. But one wouldn't hurt. Satchet full of smelly, nice herbs. Helidur's first bonds. Mother, you cared for me like the hound minds its pups. Better, even. My earliest, fondest memories were with you. When I played mischiefs and capered around, you held me so close. And I love you, son. Yo, he gains the trait loyal? I've never played a character with the loyal trait. Skeever infestation. Since the onset of the epidemic, my physician Zamars has always been wearing a mask of concern, but it is never But never has her worry been as palpable as it is now, as she invites me into her study. My lady, she begins gravely, I have received troubling news of a skeever infestation in Al Knaxhaklu El <laughs> These vile rodents, known to carry plagues, are too large and formidable to be controlled by mere cats. If we have to reclaim control over the burgeoning population, we must take extraordinary measures. Order your guards to hunt the skeevers. Resist the plague, even though it's... Even though it's starting to lose its steam, let's... Negotiate alliance with my son? Sure. Pose non marital alliance with. Call the Brute? Another Naga ally? Sure. Don't mind if I do. And with that, we have more or less survived the plague. We only have one little territory ba in our land still left that has it, and that is shrinking. We are almost plague-free. The only place that exists... Kothringi diminished by the Gnaten! As the Nahatan flu of rock guard slowly subsides, your scouts find empty hamlets after empty hamlets. Rock guard... Rock guard got hit, at least. Argonia and Naga now make up the majority of the population. There weren't many Cuthringi in Black Marsh to begin with, but after the flu, things look grim indeed. Your people are on the verge of extinction. Maybe the Naga can help the survivors. Chiefdom of Rockguard gets surviving non-Argonian relief, which is holding taxes minus, but development growth plus. But there's a chance, a 7% chance, that we could keep it Kathringi 
if we forgo the Naga's help and try to gather up the survivors. From dust. Did it work? Finally, the plague has left the realm and we must take an opportunity from the chaos left in its wake. We now emerge from the wreckage of an old world, and the time has come to consider the new. Masses of survivors have already begun moving to the chiefdom of Jivas Rexu as their new haven, and it could prove to be an exciting opportunity for the capital. Jivas Rexu? Why? Of all the places. No thanks. We must spare no expense to re rebuild. Just for the record, Deathwart's Pond, still Kathringi. Rock Guard, Naga, unfortunately. Woo! Kathringi didn't die! We are doing great! You want to declare war on Shadowfen, maybe? Oh, my cat's trying to get in here. But the video is done anyway. I tried to be a good, humble queen, but it makes me. But it feels like my every action reeks of pride. Others of my station live so modestly, but I can't seem to flaunt my magnificence. But I seem to flaunt my magnificence at every opportunity. I can't seem to stand it. I need to be alone to think about this. And our stress level is finally reduced, too. I am honestly surprised we survived the plague. I didn't expect. We are in excellent health still. Sorry, we're in good health. Probably because of Chrisimir. Oh my goodness. And my cat is clawing at my door. I will catch you next time. I'm very happy.